and we'll buy that book for real, for real. You won't have to buy all the books and put it in a warehouse. <laughs> Somebody said she bought all the books and put it in a warehouse. <laughs> That's how she got to like number one initially. Why did the world can change me? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Leilani of Barbados. So nice to see you again. I'm here to tell a fairy tale. It is called How to Turn a Prince into a Frog by Meghan Markle. <laughs> I am officially your fairy godmother and I am going to advise you on all things fairy tale. Once upon a time there was a girl called Meghan Markle and she lived in a faraway land called La La Land. And she met a prince and he came into her life. She, f she fell into his life and he fell into her life. So I've literally tripped and fell into my life. I <laughs> fell into her life. And henceforth, they fell in love and lived happily ever after, whilst making the rest of the world unhappy ever after. Okay? No, but it is very interesting um, because Megan wrote this book called The Bench, which is finally being highly criticized. At first they said it was a bestseller and all this stuff and like anybody with a brain that works was like, but it's just unfinished sentences and praising. It's not a children's book, it's praising a man, a grown man, and it's about a woman bigging up herself while at the same time bigging up her husband. And I don't really understand the children's book aspect of it. Critics are, are saying that children should not read it because the grammar is poor. It's plummeted on Amazon, it's plummeted everywhere. Um, so that's what you get when you plagiarize and you have no actual writing skills. <laughs> anyway, what I really want to talk about here is how Meghan managed to manipulate Harry. Harry was honestly I just can't get over it. I'm sorry, I just can't get over it. He was honestly like the coolest guy ever. He came to the Caribbean, he came to Barbados, he came to islands like Jamaica, danced the reggae music, and was like vibing with people. And we're like, oh hell yes. He is the coolest of the royal family right now. And in fact, when he got with Megan, we had this glimmer of hope that like, it was because he was so culturally in tune. He seemed much more in tune and comfortable with that. and. Megan was like literally a sheep in wolf's clothing. No, that's not how that goes. <laughs> what does that saying go? A wolf in sheep's clothing, <laughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, she was that. And so she was what we thought she was, but she thought she was something else. What we're gonna talk about now is how did Megan turn this prince into a frog? This beloved prince who is so cool, you know? And there is something to be said for the isolation idea. And I was trying to get to read some information on the psychological effects of isolating a partner from his family. But instead, like every time I Google isolation, it had to do with pandemic. And I was just like, how to isolate your partner in your household? How to isolate your partner? <laughs> outside of your household. Like, you know, people who have come down with the virus or whatever. So let me just speak from my mind. Can I? When you have somebody and you isolate them, that's like a red flag for abuse because you turn them against everybody in their family so that they can no longer have like phone conversations and say, hi, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Let me tell you about this bitch. She's pissing me off. Like you can't, once you cut that connection, once you isolate them from anybody they could possibly speak to, you can completely abuse them and there's no repercussions for it because there's nobody that they're speaking to, you know? So that's always a red flag for abuse. I know that much, but I didn't realize it was such a big part of their relationship. The fact that they were isolated. And we, we, we camped out with each other under the stars, two dates, and then, <laughs> and then going basically effectively on a holiday together nowhere. in the middle of nowhere and, and that's a, like a cheat to get into somebody's head. I looked back at the interview, the engagement interview, and first of all, the body language has totally changed. Harry's body language. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought about something. <laughs> because when I, when I did that skit with my husband where he said, me get that brainwash, remember that one? It was just like, 
I didn't realize that there's actual evidence of brainwashing because Harry was not the same person in that engagement interview that he is now. He's completely different. I don't know if he's a sponge. I don't know how he got so different. I don't know if it's a kamtama, what we call kamtama, which is like a voodoo kamtama. You know, if she has a kamtama, but I don't believe in voodoo. And by the way, like if you don't believe in it, it can't hurt you, Harry. If you don't believe in it, it cannot hurt you, honey. Okay? But I don't know what it is, but like something really drastically changed with him. In fact, in the interview, and I'm going to put some clips in here, um, where he definitely reminds me of Prince Charles, in fact, more than anything else. And he's gone all the way from that, so very, very, to like, right? Whereas in this conversation, um, why do I keep calling it a conversation? It's an interview. Oprah, get out of my head. But in this interview, Harry is actually talking like he's having an interview. And Meghan is talking like, and you know, and the lifestyle living and the life and the so on and the, you know, and so, right? Because I didn't really have that lived experience, right? And she's talking all that nonsense. But so she hasn't changed. But he most certainly has. And so it's also like, you feel like she must have broken him down to build him back up. It's not, it's not really something you can see, but it's something that that's what they do in sororities and fraternities, which is one she was part of, which is, what was it called at Northwestern University? It was called Kappa Kappa Gamma. And in Kappa Kappa Gamma, which is, you know, some sororities are known for white being white only sororities and black only sororities. This was a white only sorority and some sororities are known for being heavily diverse, okay? Well, Kappa Kappa Gamma, what is it called? Yeah, Kappa Kappa Gamma was a white only sorority. And she was part of that and she hazed Harry. She learned how to haze probably there. I think she learned how to haze there and she definitely used that on Harry. So she seemed to have broken him down by telling him, you're broken, you have these problems, don't worry because of course people will say you're privileged but you're actually completely not and you're so why am i talking in that accent you're actually completely not and you're broken and we have to work on your healing because you lost your temper and you're a redhead you're a fiery redhead we got to get that out of you right Okay, so how did she manage to do it? Let's just, sorry, I'm talking too long. Let's just get right to it. So first she said, Abracadabra, I have no time on my calendar because I'm on my show. But even though I've been on my show for, I guess six years at that point, I've been working on my show for seven years. And she says this about my show, my show, when talking about Suits, although she does mention Suits because they say, Harry, did you know she was on Suits? Have you ever watched Suits? And he says, no. So they can use the name Suits. So we know that we, they can say that freely in the interview. But for some reason, she keeps referring to it as my show and my show, six years and seven years. And there's like also discrepancy with that, which makes me think she's a pathological liar. But yeah, she says six years to seven years on my show. And it's like, how is it your show though? Because I've never personally watched the show, but I know that people are saying that she was starting out as a minor character. And because she had this affair, a sexual affair with one of the main characters, she elevated or evolved into a bigger character, but it's not her show. She's not the starring talent on the show at all. So she said, Abracadabra, I can't find any space on my calendar. Like, right, diaries. We need to get the diaries out and find out how we're going to make this work because I was off to Africa for a month. Mm. Um, she was working and we just said, right, where's, where's the gap? So the only space I can seem to find is when you go off to your locations. And it's these Commonwealth locations that I find very interesting, i.e. she wanted a nice holiday in sunshine and an exotic location. Let's get real. I'm from the Commonwealth. I know what people think. It is... Barbados is an exotic location. And also being able to go around to the Commonwealth, I think it's just... Mm. So first of all, she finds that after two dates with him, she has no time on her calendar, no time to see family or friends, that he never gets to know his friends, never gets to know his family, but she'll meet him and spend six months alone with him. We had a good five, six Could months alone with just privacy. 
Oh, what? what? No, what? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say grooming. No, 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 I didn't say grooming. No, no, no. She has six months to work on his brain alone. Meanwhile, she's already studied everything that's important to tell him in those six months about the royal family, but without saying the royal family. Say the royal family without saying the royal family. Spray on Diana's perfume. Talk about the way you want to help the world. That's your only purpose in life, really, is to do good and be, I don't know what they would call public service. You know, so she's got all the information. She read all the books. She visited Buckingham Palace. Her friends have said she was completely obsessed with Diana. Don't mind all the crap about she doesn't know anything about anything. She actually did. And I think that meeting him was a huge goal that she reached <laughs> in meeting him because now that I know more, it's like, I feel like she must have seen him and been like, honestly, I don't, to be really honest with you, I don't find him attractive, guys, I'm sorry. I just don't find him attractive. Um, but I think that she was like, I need to get him. He is Diana's son and I'm obsessed with Princess Diana. But other than that, I don't think that she would have sought him out if he was just another guy in a pub like Pierce Morgan. You know? Because I think that Pierce Morgan and Harry are on like the same level of attractiveness to me. I'm going to be really honest with you. Seriously. Neither of them are attractive to me. <laughs> but I do love Pierce Morgan because I love his... I just love his person, his TV personality. I don't know him. Sorry, Pierce. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. But like, yeah, she, she definitely sought him out and then she had these six months to groom him and completely twist up his mind and probably every other word out of her head was something of an excerpt from the book about Diana that she studied. I can't imagine working that hard just for the record. I'm just putting this video together so you understand how this happened to Harry. But I personally could not imagine spending that amount of time not being authentic. Authentic. You know, like the woke people say, I can't imagine that amount of time, like putting on an act. I know she's an actress. Okay. She's trained actress, but she's not even a good actress. So it's like, she must've put a lot of energy. It's like me learning Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's not my forte. So it's hard. And I can't imagine doing that and working on another innocent human being at the same time. At the end of the day, she has come out with this clone, which can't really be attractive to her, that she's convinced this man to become something completely different. And her clone, like, that must make you think, okay, I did what I did, but he's weak. <laughs> you know? He's so weak. Damn, he's weak. I don't want him anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just guessing. But um, anyway, to to let's move on a little bit from that. Um, that is the fairy tale that was. They lived happily ever after with Harry's brain in a jar full of formaldehyde. <laughs> Unfortunately, Harry, who has been turned into this pitiful, pathetic frog is now just doing so much foolishness. Every time he turns around, he's making a mess. The bonkers thing, the freedom of speech is bonkers, the um, Joe Rogan thing. It's just, every turn is like a mistake, a misstep, just like her. He's literally turned into her, where he was very composed and very poised before. And even in this interview, he acted like a normal person, whereas she was like, oh, Yes, Harry, speaking. Harry, speaking. Well, I, I must look speak. straight I, into I his eyes like this. I was beautifully surprised. So unnatural. And he's not doing it back to her. <laughs> that's, I think it's what stood out the most was that he didn't do it back because he was still of sound mind at that time. Ish. Ish. He, he was about to go through the vortex, but like just on the cusp of going through the vortex, but he was just, he, he was there. He was still here, here, sorry, with us. And so she's just like, 
speak and she's holding his hand with like two hands like gripping it like and then capable it's so of, nicely said isn't it yeah. but she's capable of she's capable of it. i don't know if she was giving him like morse code through his hands like it's just too much and this is where you see the demise of a totally normal person write the book megan write the book how to turn a prince into a frog um please do get a ghostwriter by the way <laughs> because you can't write clearly and just let let us know how you did that because all of the psychoanalysts and um, behavior analysts and all these people would just really love to know that story and we'll buy that book for real for real you won't have to buy all the books and put it in a warehouse <laughs> Somebody said she bought all the books and put it in a warehouse. <laughs> That's how she got to like number one initially. And then it just really like, you know, it's like buying views on YouTube. When people go and buy views and buy subscribers, it's like, boom, two minutes after they post the video, 70,000 views. It's like, mm, that's not how it works. But then eventually it levels out and you start to see like how everybody's fake. Or like, even Instagram is a better example because you can actually look at the followers and see like, they're all bots. <laughs> so you might buy a lot of the books and put it in a warehouse as allegedly you did. And then people might think, oh my God, maybe I should actually buy the book. I mean, it must be good. But then after a while, things, the truth come out in the end. Things come out, as we say in the end. And it will level off and you'll start to see that that person is really not deserving of whatever tactics they used to make them look like they were deserving in the first place, so to speak. Grow organically, guys. Grow organically. <laughs> oh my God, thank you so much for watching. What a crazy rant. It's quite late and I'm really excited to talk to you at any time of the night. Uh, I have another video that I'm going to put out, but uh, it's going to be on an issue on Good Morning Britain, but I hope you will still watch it for me because it ties in. It ties in. It ties in. Okay. Thank you so much. Lots of love to you. And I'll catch you soon. Bye.